fact, uh, because it's all stretched out like this, we're going to have to do completing the square twice. So when you're completing the square, especially with ellipses and later with our hyperbolas, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create two parentheses. The first one's going to have all of our x stuff in it in descending order. And our second parentheses will have all of our y stuff in descending order. And then leave space, of course, so you can complete the square. And then put the number on the opposite side of the equation. So in this case, when I move my 49 to the right, it becomes negative. So just to recap, all of your x stuff goes in the first parentheses, leave some space. All of your y stuff goes in the second parentheses, leave some space. And then the number you get alone on the opposite side of the equation. As I complete the square, before I can do that, I need to factor out whatever the common factors are. So in my x parentheses, that would be a 4, which means that x squared minus 2x <coughs> is left over. In my y parentheses, that's a 9 which means I have y squared minus 6y left over. And then on the opposite side over there, I still have my minus 49. When you're completing the square, remember that it's the um, term that comes after the x squared term, or in other words, your x term and your y term. Um, it's the non-squared term that you use to complete the square. So in my first parentheses, when I'm completing the square, I take half of that negative 2, which is negative 1, and I square it, that gives me a positive one. This pink number has now unbalanced my equation, which means you have to do the same thing on the opposite side, but you can't forget, of course, that the four on the outside of that parentheses is affecting that one. So I didn't actually add one, I actually added four. So I must add four to the right-hand side as well. In the y parentheses, if I take half of that negative six, that's negative three, I square that, that's positive nine. Just like in the x parentheses, don't forget about the 9 that's being distributed. When I distribute that 9, I didn't actually add 9, I actually added 81. So now what I've done is I've completed the square and balanced my equations. I can rewrite this equation in its completed square form. On the right-hand side, if I take negative 49, 4, and 81 and combine all of those things, I get 36. And if I look at my first parentheses, I have four times something squared. That's because we've now completed the square. Or in other words, we can write that big long parentheses as something squared. In order to write down what the parentheses is squared, I'm going to take the square root of the first thing. So the square root of x squared is x. I take the square root of the last thing. The square root of one is one. I look inside that parentheses in the dark blue and I notice there's a minus sign in there. So I put a minus sign in between. So you'll notice that you don't see the negative two x anywhere. That's because I would get that if I expanded out that parentheses being squared. Likewise, in the second parentheses, I leave my 9 there, but I'm going to have something squared. Um, since I have now completed the square, I take the square root of y squared, which is y. I take the square root of 9, which is 3. Oh, I look inside and I see a negative symbol, so I put a minus in between. This is great, except for one small problem. In standard form, I'm supposed to have everything equal to 1 and I notice that I'm not equal to one, I'm equal to 36. So in order to remedy that, I'm going to divide each piece in my equation by the 36 to make that happen. As I divide every single piece by 36, on the right-hand side, fortunately now, I am equal to one, which is what I wanted. On the left-hand side, as I simplify these, I notice that four over 36 is not simplified, so four 36 is the same as one ninth. So as I write this, I don't really have to put down the 1 here, but just to show you what's going on, there's a 1 there, and then I have x minus 1 squared all over 9. Likewise, in the second parentheses, I'm going to have y minus 3, and 9 36 is the same thing as 1 fourth. Again, I could put the 1 in front of the parentheses, but it's not necessary. And don't forget that both of those parentheses are squared. So 4 36, same as 1 ninth, 9 36, the same as 1 fourth. And now I have everything in its standard form, which means that if I wanted to, I could graph all this stuff. So if I'm graphing all this stuff, I put my coordinate axes over here. I notice, first of all, that my center is at 1, 3. And that's very important, because I always have to graph my center first. So at 1, 3, here's my center. Everything's always based off the center. 
from that center, I know that I'm going to be going left and right three units, and I'm going to be going up and down two units. So as I graph my vertices, I know that my vertices are always in the longer direction. So my vertices, since they're in the x direction, three units, you need a pass uh, on the table, thank you. I'm going to be going left three units and right three units. So as I do that, to the right three is over here, and to the left three, one, two, three, is over here. So as I write down the coordinates of my vertices, to the right three of my center is four, three, to the left is negative two, three. And now I need to find my co-vertices. My co-vertices are the smaller direction, which is two units in the Y. That means up and down the center, two units. So if I go down two units from my center, I'm here. If I go up two units, I'm right here. And I can write down those coordinates. Again, that's from my center, up and down two units, which means I'm up one, five, and I'm also at one, one. I now have all the coordinates for my vertices and my co-vertices. I can connect all those things. When I connect all those things, this is my ellipse. I have one thing left to do. I have to find my foci. I use my foci formula, which says c squared equals a squared minus b squared. In this case, that means I have nine minus four for my c squared. Or in other words, again, my c is plus or minus the square root of five, just like it was in the previous problems. If I'm writing down the coordinates of this, I'm gonna go from my center, of course. So if I'm looking for my foci coordinates, my foci coordinates are going to be square root of five units. And in this case, left and right from my center, I'm gonna write it as one plus or minus the square root of five <coughs> comma three, which means I went one and then added on the square root of five to the right, which is somewhere right about here. And then I take away the square root of five to the left, which is somewhere right here from the center. And so that's a little bit more than two units left and right from my center. The next thing that we're going to talk about is something called the eccentricity. The eccentricity is talking about the squishiness of your ellipse. So what you really need to know about eccentricity is that it's C over A. And in our next problem, we'll work with that. In our next problem, you notice again that we're going to have to complete the square. So when I complete the square, I put all of my X stuff in my first parentheses. I put all of my Y stuff in my second parentheses. So as I do that, I have 9x squared plus 36x, leave a space. I have 4y squared minus 24y, leave a space, move the 36 to the other side, and you get negative 36. I then factor out the numbers in front of the squared, so I have 9 parentheses x squared plus 4x, leave a space. 4 parentheses y squared minus 6y, leave the space, and that again is still equal to negative 36. As I complete my square, I take half of the 4 in front of the x, that's 2, square that, I get positive 4. Don't forget that that 4 is being affected by the 9 on the outside, which means I'm actually adding 36 to the right-hand side. Then I do the same thing again. With the, other, with the other number in front of the y, so negative 6, I take half of that, that's negative 3, and I square it, I get positive 9. But again, my 4 is affecting that, so it means I need to add 36 more. As I rewrite this equation, what I see is that I'm now going to have 9 times parentheses x plus 2 squared plus 4 times y minus 3 squared equals 36. And the way that I got the x was I took the square root of x squared. The way that I got the 2 was I took the square root of 4. There are no negative signs in the parentheses, so that's why there's a plus in the middle. In the y parentheses, the square root of y squared is y. The square root of 9 is 3. And I happen to notice that there was a negative inside, so I put a minus in between. Surprise, surprise, there's not a 1 on the right-hand side of the equation. So I have to make it that way by dividing every single piece by 36. When I simplify this, what I'll notice is that on the left-hand side over here, I'll have parentheses x plus 2 squared all over 4 plus y minus 3 squared all over 9 equals 1. And now everything is in my standard form, and I can draw my coordinate axes, place my center, and draw my ellipse. 
When I talk about my center, it's whatever makes my parentheses zero. So that would be negative two, three. And I can put that on my coordinate axis system. So negative two, three is right about here. And then from my center, everything is based. So if I want to find my vertices, my vertices are always along the major axis, which is the bigger number. I notice that the bigger number is under the y parentheses. So the square root of nine is three. So from my center, I will go up and down three units. So one, two, three, up. And I have one vertex and one, two, three, down. And I have my other vertex. I can write those coordinates as negative two, six, and negative two, zero for my vertices. My covertices will be in the other direction then, and the smaller number, so the smaller number four is under the x thing. That means horizontally I'm gonna go left and right two units, which is the square root of four. So two to the right, when I'm doing my covertices would be right here, and then two to the left for my other covertice would be right here. I can write down those coordinates for my covertices. So one of them is going to be at 0, 3, and the other one is going to be at negative 4, 3. I can draw my ellipse now if I want to. So here's my ellipse. I have one thing left to find, and then we're going to talk about the eccentricity. I need to find my foci. So to find my foci, I know that my foci formula c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Or in other words, c squared equals 9 minus 4. This is like the millionth time we've had this number. It's plus or minus the square root of 5. So that means I'm going to go roughly 2 and a little bit more up and down from my center since that was the bigger stretch. If I write the coordinates of those foci off to the side here, I know that since I'm basing everything off the center, I stay at negative 2 in the x direction, but I take that 3 and I go up and down the square root of five. If you want to write them as two separate coordinates, you can. You would have negative two comma three plus radical five and negative two comma three minus radical five. Or you can write them as one set since um, it's a plus or minus radical five. The last thing that you're supposed to find is the eccentricity. And eccentricity is always your C over your A. We found out the c was just the square root of 5 just now, and my a squared was 9, so that means my a is 3. Or in other words, the eccentricity or the squishiness of this ellipse is radical 5 over 3. In the remainder of our problems, we're going to be 